Hello everyone, in today's video uh, we're going to be starting a series on the PMDG Douglas DC-6. Now this is a payware aircraft and there's really a lot to it, but I think this is a really neat plane and it's definitely a pilot's plane and it's the kind of airplane I really really like to fly because of its uh, pretty serious complexity on board. And uh, we're going to go take a look at this uh, step by step, I'm not going to try to shove it all in one video because it would take just a little bit too long. Instead I'm going to do it over a short series. Uh, let's go ahead and get started. So first things first, though, we climb on board this thing and look around, and it is not what I consider to be uh, terribly well organized as far as airplanes goes. Uh, one of the great things I love is the uh, flight engineer, since we're a crew of three, has this nice fold-up little seat here to go ahead and sit in, and he'd basically sit between us, and he'd reach up above us and uh, work all the flight engine controls. Now, the interesting thing with the engineer stuff is a really scary engineer stuff. It's actually located way above our heads. It's not so much located here, although there's quite a bit going on in this panel. So, well, as far as us down in pilot land is concerned, you know, we're interested in things here, and obviously this unbelievably complicated looking uh, central console which I say don't panic it's not nearly as scary as it looks so let's go ahead and uh, walk you through the uh, initial checklists and get this thing started and uh, we'll do a little bit of taxing and uh, then we'll go ahead and kind of take it from there sort of a thing so first things first um, if you come over to this little control panel you've got all sorts of neat little stuff here including this little like, ground power unit if you go to the fuel and low manager you can actually dial in things like your weight in this case I'm not carrying any passengers so I might as well shrink it down just a little bit so go ahead and uh, scroll say we're carrying a uh, 40 30 passengers uh weight in the bottom we'll call it about half or so by the way this aircraft at maximum weight is slow next thing we're going to do is take a look at our fuel tanks and uh, notice we have a main and uh, uh, alternate uh, alternate what's this alternate and basically what you're going to be doing here is you're going to make sure you have the correct amount of fuel for the flight again depending on how far you're flying depends on what you're going to carry keep in mind the other version of the dc6 the a model uh, carries less fuel because it is a cargo one there's also this really really cool little engine stress vein, uh, visualizer here that you can see how the engines are running and everything like that it's kind of neat i like to leave this open once i get going and of course you have your handy dandy automatic uh, fuel engineer fl uh, flight engineer i'm having a tough day today and he does a really really nice job as far as getting all the states set and we'll use him a little later on but for now we'll keep it manual all right so what's the first thing we got to do in this airplane now after we've uh, climbed and locked everything in well we're going to look behind us and make sure that all of our different circuit breakers have been closed uh yes those are all circuit breakers and basically i'm going to go flip my head over here and you can take a look at all of these now let me give you a really really big pro tip here if you press Control alt and then a number at the top of your keyboard you can save a view so for example if i want to save this view i can press uh, let's say Control alt column number five and now if i go back to my original one now press alt five I can now snap my head back to this. This is the greatest and most handy thing you're going to need. For example, if I press Alt-1, I've saved this view right here. Uh, that's absolutely critical, because if you skip that, you're going to have a really tough time pushing buttons. So let's go ahead and define a couple more views real fast. I'm going to go ahead and uh, create this view over here. I'm just going to float my head upwards so that we can see all the control panels above our head pretty clearly. I'm going to call this uh, view number two. Uh, control alt 2 so now if i go alt 1 i'm over here if i press alt 2 i'm over here I press alt 5 i'm all the way over here if i press f i go back to the default view which i find to be too, too tilted down next view we want is uh, we absolutely want to have a view right in front of the different little uh, mixture controls as well as all these knobs down here i'm just going to call this view 3 so alt 1 brings me over here actually, i actually have to reset my view first there we go Alt-2 is going to bring me up top, Alt-3 is going to bring me down here. In the event of an emergency, I can jump back to this position too if I need to. Um, that is going to be your absolute best friend as far as settings. And you know what, we'll do one more too. Let me go float down here and get a little closer to these switches, because our fuel switches are going to be kind of a big deal later on. And again, don't panic, it's not nearly as scary as it looks. All right, let's try it. Let's reset my view. Alt-1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Nice. Now that this has been all set, we are pretty much ready to rock here. By the way, this is a real-world weather. We're sitting at Bradley International Airport. Uh, this is in uh, Connecticut, uh, New England, the United States. And you can see the weather is absolutely miserable, which is absolutely perfect for a plane like this. So what am I going to do? I'm going to go ahead and open up the windows. <laughs> You're probably saying, why is this a step? You're going to need to so that you can hear what's going on behind you. Trust me when I say that. I'm going to go grab that, throw it all the way out of the way. Remember, you have to actually open it after you do it. And now you can listen to the beautiful pitter-patter of the rain. Yeah, it's not that loud. Sorry about that. I should turn it up, but that's okay. All right, so next what we're going to do is we're going to swing our heads over to the left, and we're just going to confirm that all of our temperatures make sense. So right now, our cockpit temperature is set to, you know, I'm going to set it right around warm. It doesn't make that much of a difference. Emergency equipment's done. Hand fire extinguisher's done. Circuit breaker panels, we've all taken care of those. Inverter circuit panel, we're going to set them set. We've done it already. And now we're actually going to get some battery power going on this thing. So you have two battery switches up at the tip top. You have one that says ground and battery power. And you have this other one that selects where the source is. So for us, we actually have a little battery power supply connected to the bottom of the airplane right there. We're going to be using that initially today. So I'm going to click this to ground power. The orange light's going to come on. You can test the orange light, by the way, by clicking on it. And I'm going to click this switch 
<laughs> I love that. <laughs> Those are just fun to play with. And now you can see that we have electrical power and that it is connected. As soon as you do that, some of your switches are going to come on, some of your lights are going to come on. A lot of things will not because the inverters on here are basically going to be kept separate from everything else that you're going to see here. Notice you get a big angry instrument power failure and everything along those lines. Don't panic. There's nothing bad. All right, so now we're just going to make our way kind of down. So after we take care of that, we're going to go flip on the little switches up top. We're going to say, please don't smoke in my plane. We're going to go ahead and turn to the safety belt. Because it's so nasty, we're going to turn our position lights. We'll be starting shortly, and we'll go ahead and hit the beacon light right now so that it's all ready to go. All right, so our next step is going to be to go ahead and set the cow flaps, which are basically our method of cooling. We're going to go ahead and snap these all the way open. I'm just wheeling my mouse to do it a little bit quicker. And again, these are electric cow flaps. They're not like the old style ones, but if you look really carefully on the side, they're actually slowly opening up. Uh, we want to leave this open when we're down here on the ground. So now what we're going to do is we're going to confirm that our fuel booster pumps are off. And notice how many of them we are, have, and very important. Uh, we're also going to go down to the cooling turbine switch and make sure that is all set. Obviously, I'm looking right now, it looks pretty good to me. That's the switch right here. We want to make sure that one's fine. Uh, we're going to set our inverter switches to on. Now, this is a cool trick. Watch this. You can actually rock that thing to snap them on. Again, I'm not sure why you want to do that, but you could. And now we're going to go ahead and snap on the engine instrument inverter, and now we're good to go. Auxiliary blur blower should be in the off position, which it is. We're going to make sure our heater fuel switch, which is right over here, and we're going to double check to make sure these are all down. And then we're going to go ahead and turn on the cabin heater master, which is what that switch right there is. Uh, we're not going to need the airfoil one until a little bit later on. Let's see here. System number one, just confirming everything looks good. Uh, cabin heater master switch, good. Uh, propeller de-ice, carburetors off, anti-icing fluid, hydraulic quality, uh, quantity. We're going to make sure that all looks pretty good right here. Looks good, looks good. Now it looks like we're a little on water, so uh, we're going to have to go ahead and request some of that. So we'll go down to maintenance. We'll go ahead and ask them to top up. Nice. Looks good. Looks good. All right. So now that that's been topped up, we're going to go ahead and take a look at everything else here. We're going to make sure our landing light switches are retracted and off, which they are. We're going to go double check to make sure our fuel quantity is good. It is or the quantity, you go through oil fast in this thing, by the way. You actually find that interesting. Looks good. Supercharger is low. Altimeter, we're going to go set that correctly. But by altimeter, we're actually going to be setting our cabin altimeter, which is this one over here. And um, it's been set correctly. Actually, I'm sorry, the switch right here. But it's not operable. No. Not going to worry about it. We're going to go double check to make sure all of our warning lights are off. In this case, uh, the warning lights that we were worried about are off. I'm going to look above my head, check them real fast. All right, looks good to me. We're going to go double check to make sure our fire extinguishers, discharger valves are all set correctly. Looks good to me. Uh, we're going to go ahead and check out some fire detector system warning lights. Woohoo, this is fun. I believe we're good. <laughs> Windshield heat control as desired. It's pretty warm outside. That being said, I'm going to go ahead and leave it off because it's above 10 degrees. We will need that a little later. We're going to want to go ahead and set our clocks and our altimeters. Our altimeter has already been set. Our clock has been set. A couple different modes on this clock. You can actually click the button and switch between different modes if you need it to. I think that's kind of a nice little feature. Uh, going next, uh, we're going to go double check to make sure the hydraulic system bypass control lever. We're going to float all the way down here. We're going to double check this one. This one right here should be on. We have a system that we can bypass. Again, if we don't need it, don't use it. We're going to come here. We're going to double check to make sure this is set to brake system. This basically selects where the emergency hydraulic pressure is going to be going to. Hydraulic system pressure, of course, if we have an auxiliary hydraulic pump, which we do not, this would be the time to go ahead and check the pressure. Obviously, we're not going to have any pressure on account of the fact that, like I said, our, nothing's running right now that can actually fill that thing with pressure. So that's all set. Uh, we're going to go ahead and take our fuel tank controls, and we're going to make sure this is set to the forward position. Ah, so let's go snap those all to forward. We're going to make sure cross feed is off, which looks pretty good over on this side. Propeller master control. <laughs> Let's see here. We're going to make sure that sets to auto. Uh, we can go ahead and click this. Oh, reverse mode. Don't do that. So we can double check. We can play with the propeller control. I actually have a separate switch on my thing for it if I need to play with it. Everything is looking good. I just want to confirm that it's all automatic. We have a resynchronized button if we need it. Don't worry about it too, too much. Uh, autopilot should be off. So uh, looking down here, we actually have two different parts of our autopilot we need to worry about. First one's going to be up top. I'm going to check that switch. Good. And the other one's going to be down here on the floor. But wait, we have a button for that. So we can actually confirm down here that that switch is indeed off. Again, you're going to want to bind those buttons not to make yourself insane here. Uh, trim tabs get set. I'm not going to worry about it. Carburetor air temperature controls. That's these three. We're going to make sure that our four, I should say. We're going to make sure those are set properly, which they are. Uh, we're going to set the wing flap lever all the way up. I'm going to go check that. I believe it is up. Now, this is when you go ahead and uh, check the mechanics interphone. So we go boop and push a button, give them a call just to say, hey, we're about to start these engines. Woo! How's that for uh, doing a before we even started anything kind of a checklist? Man, this thing gets involved. Okay, so now that that's all set, it's time to actually get this uh, bucket going here. 
So starting this one is, um, let's say there's a little bit of magic involved. But one thing you remember, if uh, for some reason engine does not start, you have to wait 30 seconds before the next start. But the procedure is actually pretty straightforward. I just want to confirm that everything is where it is. Nope. Missed the generators. I'm sorry about that. Let's see, we're going to set our start selector to engine number three. I always feel bad for this engine because it gets all the use. We're going to go ahead and set our throttles about a quarter, not quite a quarter, a quarter of an inch. That looks pretty good. Actually, it's a little more than that. So we're going to set that one so it looks pretty good. We're going to make sure our start selector is good. Our fuel pump, uh, this is a kind of interesting. Uh, this is a going to be multiple different types of fuel pump. Basically, in order to get this thing cranking, actually, you just crank out the starter. In order to actually get the fuel into it to actually start doing something, you have to build up a little bit of boost pressure on it. So I'm going to come over to the main fuel pump, and I'm going to go ahead and slap that to low mode. We can confirm that's working because I can look over here, and you can see now I have instant fuel pressure inside that particular engine. Remember, until we actually let fuel into it, nothing bad is going to happen. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and crank this. So the way this works is pretty straightforward. This one's the safety button. This one is the cranking button. This one floods it with sparks, and this one floods it with fuel. So obviously, you got to make sure you pick the right one at the right time. So what we're going to do is we're going to crank these together until he says the number three. And then when you hear the number nine, we're going to slap the magnetos on like this. Then we're going to flip on the ignition boost, which is going to be this switch. We're going to flip on the prime switch. And the moment you hear the engine go, blah, 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 we're going to do as fast as we can to go ahead and start this thing. So as you can see, it's, it's a bit of a process and requires a lot of fingers. All right, I'm going to turn him up a little bit so I can hear him and let's do it. And that's it. Now the trick here is don't over rev the engines, otherwise you're gonna have issues. Now the reason I opened those windows earlier is so I could actually see exactly what's going on. So that's it for getting one of the engines going. Of course, usually what I do is I come over here to that particular engine, give it just a couple little nudges to kind of get it going. All right, nice. Obviously you don't wanna rev this thing up too, too much here. So I'm gonna back it up just a little bit too. All right, let's see if we can get the other ones to be that polite. Yeah, that never happens usually. So let's go ahead and uh, pick engine number four. It's gonna be our next one. We're gonna go through the same process. We're going to establish fuel pressure by pressing this button. We're going to start it, boost it, and then we're going to go ahead and uh, crank it over to the other mode. So again, it's going to be start first to get everybody turning. Once it goes enough, we're going to go ahead and turn on the mags. Then we're going to turn on this one, this one, and then snap the thing on. All right, here we go. Ready, ready, ready. Push the button. Safety, start. All right. And it did not catch. <laughs> so now when uh, this occurs to you, uh, don't panic too, too much. It's going to happen to you about a million times. Don't sweat. Uh, basically, now we have to wait 30 seconds, and then we can test that engine for another time. Now, what you probably have noticed is I turned on the wrong magneto. Newbie mistake. I know you're all yelling at me. It's all right. Okay, let's try it again. It's been 30 seconds. So we're going to start. As soon as it clicks to 9, we're going to flip this on, flip this on, flip this on, hit the power. So Alt-4 is going to be our magic. Oh, Alt-3, I should say. Alt 2, Alt 3, I got my hands on the controls. Here we go. And we got a good start. Nice. <laughs> Once in a while I get lucky. Not every time, not every time. All right, let's go ahead and get the other two. We're going to switch it to engine number two now. Uh, yep, two. I can't believe I did that out of order. Ah, sigh. You can shut these two switches off. We don't need them right now. Establishing fuel pressure first. We're going to go ahead and uh, hit the start and get the thing turning. Three, six, five, twelve. Nice. Hey, hey, hey. I'm bad at this, but today I'm being okay. Being okay. All right, let's look back over our heads. Let's go ahead and get number one started also. Establishing fuel pressure. I'm going to shut these two switches off. Click. Three, six, five, and we are lit. <laughs> Excellent. All right, now that we got that going, we can go switch over to plain battery, because uh, that's all set. We can also close these uh, noisy windows so that we can actually hear ourselves again. 
Don't forget to close it and then latch it. Don't latch it when it's open. Let's go ahead and slap this thing closed. That looks pretty good. And stick that one on. Come on. You're going to do it. There it goes. Sweet success. All right, let's go ahead and take a look. So now when we're revving these engines up, we want to run them at about 1,000 RPM. And it's going to take some time to actually get these engines up to temperature before we can actually go. This is a good time to go ahead and now walk through all the different uh, sequences as far as, you know, things like that. So we're going to give this thing a few minutes to kind of get itself up to temperature. If we want to check that, by the way, you can come to the actual engine stress visualizer, and you can see very clearly that only one of my engines is remotely warm and everything else is uh, significantly cold. Obviously, some of you are sitting there going, um, can't we just go ahead and uh, rev these things up to kind of get them warmer sooner uh, you could and if you have separate throttles like some folks do you're certainly welcome to sit here and manipulate them manually unfortunately the way it's programmed is i can't actually move one of these as long as my throttle is being touched uh, that's either some kind of noise in the throttle or something along those lines it's just one of those tricky annoying things that you just kind of kind of have to put up with as this thing warms up so basically what are we waiting for so uh, first things first we need to make sure cylinder head temperature gets to at least 150. we need to make sure that our carburetor air temperatures are, again we can play with these a little bit to try to get them a little bit warmer we'll do that in a second and obviously our oil temperature and oil pressures have to be good once this thing's nice and stabilized i do like to go ahead and shut off my boost pumps. I don't need them anymore. Obviously, if any engine cuts off on you at this time, that means you've got some kind of issue with your main fuel pump that's uh, not working properly, but it shouldn't have any impact on the actual performance. So let's go ahead and uh, tweak our temperatures a little here because I noticed that my carburetors are a bit on the cold side. Flip my head up just a little bit. I'm going to zoom in real quick. Yeah, that looks pretty good. And we'll go ahead and set them to, we'll call it 50%. Uh, yeah, we'll call it 15%. Yeah, 16 is going to be close enough. Obviously, if you have a switch on your controller that can do this for you, that's going to make your life much simpler. And you're going to run into that problem about a thousand times, as you will discover. Put this up to, like I said, about 16%. Let's see what that does for our carburetor temperatures. Obviously, you're trying to stop the formation of ice. And you can see that pops our carburetor temperatures right up to about 20, 18, 19 degrees, which takes them right out of the danger zone. You can see pretty clearly that, like I said, we're right out of the danger zone. The flight engineer, by the way, does a much better job of this than I do, and I usually let him worry about it. Let's go ahead and get our avionics turned on. Looks good. Come on down here, flip on our next set of avionics. Also looks good. And everything is uh, running, and uh, we are looking great. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, pause, and uh, we're going to go do our run-up sequence next, and then we'll go ahead and call it a video, and then we'll deal with a uh, climb and all that other good stuff next time. Let's go see what we got. All right, we're now ready to go ahead and do our run-up. Now, with an aircraft this complicated with uh, dynamically damaging engines, it's always a good idea to actually do the run-up. But fortunately for us, it's uh, very, very simple in this particular aircraft. So what are we going to do? We're going to go ahead and start by setting the park and brake. We're going to go ahead and release our gust lock here because uh, sometimes it will actually get itself in the way when you go ahead and do this. So the way this works is pretty straightforward. Double check your cow flaps are in the correct position. We're going to go ahead and rev this sucker up to about 1,500 RPM. Everything's going to start shimming and shaking. Don't worry, that's perfectly fine. That's part of the fun. And once you get out of that kind of nasty zone, zone, you'll be fine. So once we get ourselves right around this RPM, uh, we can then begin running through everything. First thing we want to do is we want to experiment with the propellers themselves. We're going to go ahead and do a reload. And I'm pulling this all the way down. Everything should drop a little bit. Push it forward. It should come back up. Up nicely. I usually cycle a couple times again to make sure that oil is working properly and you can see it cycles up quite nicely just like that. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to go double check to make sure these superchargers are working correctly. Doing that takes a second. You simply come up here and click them all on. And as soon as you do that, you're going to get a huge boost of energy because obviously we're running at a higher RPM and now we're going to go ahead and drop these down again. And then you're going to have to kind of catch it before it dips too far below 1500 RPM. All right, that looks good. Everything's fine. Now we go ahead and do our magneto checks. Pretty easy. I just switch all of them to one. And we go down and take a look at the RPM drop. Looks like about 50, 60 RPM. Not too bad. We'll go ahead and switch it all the way to this one. Careful not to accidentally shut your engine off. You'll do it 30 times. Don't worry. Check it again. The RPM should not change at all. Looks good. Now we're going to go ahead and uh, snap it all back up into the full both position. We should see our RPMs come back up to the normal temperature. Or I should say a normal RPM. Looks pretty good right there. Another thing we always like to check too is that uh, we're going to go ahead and pop on our water switches real fast. The whole reason for this is actually to bleed the system more than it is to actually run it or anything along those lines. Going to give it a second, see what it does, see what it does, see what it does. We're going to double check all of our temperatures. Is everything within the green? Looks good, looks good, looks good. All right, let's go ahead and cool the throttles back. Let everything settle back down. And then we'll come back up to 1,000 RPM. I'm going to get a little oil pressure warning light. Doesn't surprise me. Again, everything's still relatively cool. All right, 1,000 RPM, and we are good with our run-up. All right, so that kind of gets us started as far as uh, getting this a brumbly brumbly uh, ready to rock. On our next video, we'll go ahead and uh, do our takeoff and cruise. Then on our final video, we'll go ahead and uh, put this thing down on the ground. Enjoy.